So recently I got a question from my reader who was wondering, okay, I want to be a good Christian. I want to be all in and grow in my faith, but none of my friends and family are believers. How can I grow in my Christian faith when nobody is around me to support and encourage me? And honestly, this is a great question. While I do try to provide that support and encouragement and to challenge you um, as your big sister in faith at Equipping Godly Women, obviously I am just one person and I am online and you really need that in your life, in real life as well. So that's why today I wanted to make a video just to kind of show you that you can thrive in faith as a Christian even when no one around you is supportive, even if they are making fun of you, even if they're making it hard for you, you really can thrive in faith and this video is going to show you how. Now, to be clear, the purpose of this video is not to help you convince other people that they should be Christian too. If they are, that's great. If someday that they see what you have and they want that too, that's great. But the purpose of this video really is just to help you as somebody who wants to grow in faith um, to be able to do that even when you don't have that support around you. So that's why the first thing that we need to talk about is number one, you need to seek to understand their perspective. So as a Christian, I believe in all the Christian things too, um, but not everybody does. Not everybody has that same perspective. And from their perspective, they see you as somebody um, maybe a little weird, maybe a little different, and that's good and fine, um, but for them it can really challenge their status quo, especially if you used to not be a Christian and you um, have suddenly decided that you want to be a Christian, you've converted, or you've just gotten a lot more serious about it lately. From their perspective, it can seem like, oh, everything was fine and she went and changed things. Everything was fine and now she had to go do this thing. Um, maybe they're hoping you're quit. Uh, maybe they just don't understand it. So from their perspective, it's kind of easy to see um, you are the one who's changed. You used to not be a Christian or you used to not be a sincere Christian um, and now you're really wanting to grow in faith. So that really challenges people's status quo and that can make anybody uncomfortable um, because as humans we are creatures of habit. We like things the way we like them. We like knowing what we can expect. Um, it just makes life so much easier when you see people in a certain way and they behave that way. Um, and then when they go and they change things, it really interrupts the status quo. It can really make people uncomfortable um, and it can really challenge them as well. Like, are they doing the right thing? Especially if the people in your life um, are lukewarm believers, they do consider themselves to be Christians, but they don't act like it. Um, that can really challenge people as well um, because now you're saying, no, Christians should act like this and maybe they don't want to change. Maybe they're not there yet. And again, they're human. They have the right to decide that and they can decide that for themselves. Um, but if you can just put yourself in their shoes a little bit and realize you're the one who's changed, you're the one who wants to do these new things. Um, and that's great. And you should do that. And I am totally all in support of that. Um, but maybe they're not there yet. Um, so just realizing it's okay if they're going to have a little bit of problem with that. It's okay if they don't understand because they don't understand and that's okay. It's okay for them if they haven't made that decision yet um, for themselves because they are a human who has the right to make the decisions they want to write to make. Um, you can't force them to make those decisions. Um, so just understanding you are the one who's upset the apple cart a little bit. It's worth it. It's, you know, it's good. It's a great um, change. Um, but you've changed things and it's okay and it's normal that they might be a little upset or they might not really understand. It's going to take some time for them to get used to it. Um, that's normal and it's okay. Okay, the second thing I want to talk to you about is number two. Um, you will though want to surround yourself with Christian influences. So as human beings, and I use this term human a lot, but it we're not perfect. We're all figuring this out. So as humans, um, we all really like to be around people who are like us. So yes, we do like to be around people who are different than us in some cases, um, but we generally tend to be around people who are like us. And we generally pick up the traits of the people we are around. Um, there are Bible verses on this, there are studies on this, that the people that you are around greatly affect who you are. So the biggest thing that you need to do for yourself is to make sure that you are surrounding yourself 
with godly influences. So if all of your friends and family are not Christian, um, and you are constantly surrounded by people who are not Christian, that's going to have an effect on you. Not that you should cut them out of your life, but you need to realize like if nobody in your family takes Christianity seriously, that's going to negatively impact you. If nobody in your family gets up for church, that's going to make it harder for you. Um, if nobody in your family prays, if nobody in your family has faith, just naturally from being around them, you are going to pick up some of that influence and it's going to impact you in a negative way. Again, that doesn't mean that you need to cut off communication with them. You can still love them, um, but just realize that that's something that you're going to have to guard against. And the best way to guard against that is to surround yourself with other people who are committed to being the best Christians they can. So you already are starting that because you are watching the Equipping Godly Women podcast, which that's what we're all about here. Hopefully you are signed up um, by email because that is a great way to just get that constant um, encouragement, but you're going to want that in real life as well. So how can you in real life find more friends who are Christian. You can join a good church in your area. If you don't go to church, you need to be going to church to have those people around you. You can join a Bible study. Um, you can make other Christian friends at your kid's school. You could join some kind of volunteering opportunity. Um, just whatever you can do to meet and make friends with other Christians. Maybe you know somebody in your life who is a good Christian and you really look up to them and admire them, um, but you don't really, you're not a good friend with them. Maybe you could reach out to them in real life and say, hey, I noticed you're a Christian and I want to be a better Christian myself. You know, can like not in a super awkward way, but you know, can we spend some more time together? Can we talk? Can we hang out? Um, and to make more of a friendship with people um, who are Christians so that you have those positive godly influences around you because it does make such a a difference as studies show the people that you are surrounding yourself there are studies like if you um, all of your friends are in debt you are way more likely to be in debt if all of your friends are overweight you are way more likely to be overweight if all of your friends are really people pleasers you are more likely to be a people pleaser so it's the same thing with Christianity as well if all of your friends and family are content with just looking out for themselves and their family and they don't care about religion that's going to be more likely for you. Whereas if you can surround yourself with people who are like, yes, I love Jesus, I am all in, that just becomes your new normal and it makes it so much easier. So yes, it's difficult sometimes to go and make new friends, but yes, join your church group join a women's group, join a Bible study, join a volunteer group, whatever you can do to make some of those friends in real life is going to be so important. All right, the next thing I want you to do is to find yourself a trusted godly mentor. So I know this is easier said than done. It is it, difficult to just go up to someone and say, hey, will you be my mentor? Hey, will you, you know, teach me all the things? That's really difficult to do. I myself um, would love to have more mentors in my life, but just finding those people who are just the right people um, is difficult. So I understand that. But if at all possible to have someone in your life that you can look up to, that you trust as someone who is a good, godly woman who you look up to, admire their doing things that you want to do with your life. Um, you want your life to look similar to theirs. They have some kind of expertise in an area. They're really good at something. Just someone that you really look up to um, that you can trust to ask difficult questions too. So I provide a little bit of this role at Equipping Godly Women. I do have people who email me all the time um, asking for advice on things, but for me, it's really difficult to do that in the way that most people need um, because if people are asking me for marriage advice or parenting advice, I don't know you, I don't know your situation, like I, there's only so much I can do. So to have somebody in real life that you can look up to, that you can go to them and ask them these difficult questions. Um, maybe it is a woman in leadership at your church, um, like the women's director, if you have somebody like that, um, or just somebody that you see around the church that's volunteering, you can ask the pastor. Um, maybe if you have a lot of questions, you need to seek a trusted godly counselor 
and that's an option as well. But so you have somebody in your life who you know cares about you, who knows you, who you can ask those hard questions to is going to be so helpful because we do all have those situations where we're like, okay, what do I do in this situation? Like, what is the Christian way to approach this? Like, what I want to do the right thing. I want to be a good godly woman. How do I do that? Um, so having somebody who knows you, who you can ask those really hard questions to, who can give you advice that's tailored just for you, if you can find that, that is so valuable. And I know, again, it can be difficult to find somebody, um, first of all, just to find them, but then also to be brave enough to say, hey, I need a mentor in my life, um, to go up to them and to establish more of that relationship with them. Obviously, that can be scary, but it's so worth it to know that you have somebody who knows you and cares about you and can give you good advice. And somebody, honestly, who if you're going the wrong direction, um, which you might if all of your friends and family are not Christian, if you were raised to not Christian, there may be things in your life that you're doing that are hurting you that you don't even realize. So to have somebody in your life who will be brave and loving and willing to say, hey, you're doing this thing. I see you doing it. I don't know if you're aware you're doing it, but you need to stop doing this thing. Um, so valuable to have somebody like that in your life. So if you know of anyone and you can think in your head right now, who do you know that you really admire? Who's a really awesome Christian woman. Maybe somebody you know at your kid's school. Maybe somebody you know from church. Uh, maybe an older relative. Um, maybe like a friend's grandma, even your own mom, somebody, whoever it is. Who is somebody in your life that you know you would trust their advice and you would trust that they would care about you and somebody that you would look up to? Um, you can text them, have a conversation with them and ask them like officially, Hey, I need a mentor in my life. Or even just say, Hey, can we go grab some coffee? Or, Oh, I want to go try this, whatever restaurant. Do you want to come with me? Let's go watch a movie, whatever. And kind of have it a little more informal either way. Um, don't be afraid. Put yourself out there and make these relationships with these people um, because it's going to be so helpful to have those relationships in your life when you need them. All right. The next thing I want you to do in addition to understanding your um, friends and family's perspective, surrounding yourself with positive Christian influences, both in real life and then also online following blogs and social media sites is helpful as well, watching Christian content on TV, whatever. Um, surrounding yourself and then three, having a trusted godly mentor. The fourth thing that I want you to do that's going to be so helpful for you is number four, be clear on your priorities. And by this, what I mean is if you sit down in your life and say, okay, what are my roles in life? What hats do I wear? So I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a Christian, you know, I might be a volunteer somewhere, I might be a worker at my job, an employee, um, I might, you know, be all of these things. If you sit down and you rank out, okay, the number one most important thing, this is what I am. What is the number one most important thing you are? The number two, what is the second most important thing you are? For me, and I believe, um, if you are married and have kids, that this would probably should be yours as well. But for me, the number one thing that I am is a Christian. I am a Christian before I'm a wife. I am a Christian before I'm a mom. Being a mom is super important to me, but being a Christian comes first. Like that's my number one allegiance. That's the one person that I love more than anyone else is Jesus. And he comes first above other things. So when you are in those situations and you say, okay, this person wants me to do this thing, but I'm not really comfortable with it. It's coming back to this list of priorities. Who are, who do you have allegiance to? And that's kind of a weird way to put it, but that's kind of how I think of it is, okay, what are you first and foremost? Is your main goal in life to make your husband happy? It shouldn't be. Is your main goal in life the reason you were put on this earth to make your kids happy? No. Is your main goal in life to make your extended family or your friends more comfortable. No, that's not your main goal in life. Number one, first and foremost, is you are a Christian. God created you and he loves you and he wants to have a relationship with you. And someday at the end of this world, you are going to go and meet with him and he's going to say, hey, I put you there for a purpose. How did you do? Um, how did it go? Did you fulfill the things that I gave for you to do? Did Were you the person that I wanted you to be? Did you love me and love me every day and make it clear that you love me? Or were you embarrassed about me? And what was more important to you? Where 
did your allegiance lie? And I know when I get to heaven someday, I want to say, okay, God, you sent me there on this mission. You wanted me to do these things. And I did these things. Um, I don't want to get to heaven and him say, hey, I gave you a job to go affect X number of lives. How many did you do? And me say, oh, I didn't do nearly that many because I was so worried what my husband would think of me, or I was so worried about it being inconvenient for my kids, or I was so worried about any other thing, what people would think about me. I didn't do what God wanted me to do because I was worried what people think. And that would be the worst because number one, you are sent here by God to be the person that you're supposed to be, to help the people you're supposed to help for whatever mission, whatever he gave you, which you might know, you might not know. But number one, your relationship with God is most important. And I know for me, I don't want to get to heaven and say, hey, sorry, I didn't love you enough. And I didn't tell people enough because I was so worried about what other people would think. They will talk to God about them, their own selves. You were going to talk to God about you. And even right now, like, to have that relationship is so worth it. Yes, it's going to be drama. Yes, you might make some people upset, but they are responsible for them and they are responsible for their own emotions. Not that you wanna be a jerk and walk all over them uh, because you don't and you do wanna make things easy for people as much as possible and you are if you especially you're the one who changed, so let's not like just shove it in their face. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm a Christian. This is the number one thing that I'm doing. It's more important I'm sorry if it makes you upset. I'm not going to purposely make you upset. I'm not going to rub it in your face. Um, but this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm choosing to do with my life. Because when I get to the end of my life, I'm the one who has this life. I'm the one who is living out the consequences of this life. This is my life. I get to decide. You can decide your own life, but this is what I'm going to do for me. Um, and you do get to make that decision. So just remembering, okay, who am I trying to please here? Am I trying to please my husband? Okay, but am I trying to please him at the expense of pleasing God? What comes first? What's most important? And just keeping that in mind, how can I be gentle and kind to my husband and children and family? How can I be courteous of them? But remember, God comes first. Um, so if you have to remind yourself of that before you have difficult conversations, absolutely do that, whatever will help. All right, and then the next thing, the last thing I wanna to talk to you about, number five is that you need to pray. So of course, this is such a stock Christian answer, of course, but there's a reason it's a stock Christian answer and everybody says it, is because it is effective. And yes, it might not help all of the things on the first day, um, but prayer absolutely changes things. And the more that you are praying, um, it helps you, it helps them. It's just very helpful all around. When you are praying for your friends and family, it helps you love, just for you, it helps you love them more. It helps you be more understanding. And you can pray for that too. Say, God, help me to be loving towards them. God, help me to be courageous enough to make these difficult choices even when it's hard. God, help me to be a good example of what it means to be a Christian. God, help me to set, uh, my, to shine my light in a way that, reflects well on you and whatever you need to pray for. God, help me to do the things I need to do without hurting people unnecessarily. And then praying for them as well. God, please help them to have an open heart and an open mind to the things that I am talking about and the things that are important to me. God, please help give them understanding. Please help them to be more patient. Um, please soften their heart towards you. So, you know, God, speak to them. God, talk to them and tell them these things that maybe I can't say or they wouldn't hear well from me, but God, you can talk to them. God, work in their life. God, use me to work in their life. You know, all of these prayers, whatever it is that's on your heart, because God absolutely loves you. He absolutely cares. And as you are trying to follow him um, and have a better relationship with him. That's what God wants for you too. So when you are praying these prayers that are God's will, he's going to care, he's going to listen, and hopefully he's going to answer these um, in the way that he thinks is best, which, you know, however he thinks best, we might not know. But that prayer is going to be so helpful as you walk through this and you feel like you're alone. You can also pray, hey God, send me people. And I have prayed this before and it has happened. I talked about it in a previous podcast. Um, where I prayed, God, I need someone to talk to. Will you send me someone? And half an hour later, probably not even somebody came up to me and they were like, hey, I just feel like I'm supposed to come talk to you. And they're like, this is really weird. And I was like, I've been waiting for you. Here you are. Because I prayed that God would send me someone and he did. Um, 
And I've prayed, you know, God, please help the words that I am saying to get through to this person in the way that I mean them to. So it doesn't get lost in translation. So they don't misunderstand and take things the wrong way. You know, God, please help them to hear my heart. God, please, you know, keep our relationship strong. Whatever it is that you need to pray, um, to pray this continually, however long, however much it takes, because it's good for you and it softens your heart and makes you more loving and then it's good for them as well. So those are my best tips and advice I have for you. If your friends and family are not Christian, please do not um, get so worried, thinking, worrying, caring about what they think. Yes, it matters. You should have good relationships where you can, but God is number one. And um, there are ways that you can love him and serve him and honor him and to grow as a Christian, even if your friends and family aren't supportive, even if they think it's dumb, that's fine. They can think that but we're gonna do what we know we're gonna do. So hopefully this has been kind and encouraging to you and helpful, that's the word I was looking for. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. If you know that you need more positive Christian encouragement in your life, somebody who's going to challenge you and mentor you, I would love to do the best that I can. If you are not subscribed to this channel yet, I would love for you to subscribe to us here on YouTube. I put out new videos about every other week or so on all variety of topics that Christian women deal with every single day. Um, so that's going to be really helpful. But then also make sure that you go to my website, equippinggodlywomen.com, because I regularly email out all kinds of just content and advice and encouragement. Um, I reply to my emails, almost all of them. Um, and just to be there for you, to um, have somebody that you can talk to that I can send you things and say, hey, are you dealing with this? Here's how to deal with it. Or, you know, hey, are you struggling with this? Here's my best tips and advice. Um, and I've just gotten so many emails back from people who have said, this is so helpful. This is, you know, so relevant. It's always encouraging me. Or, hey, I save your emails in a special folder so that I can go back and read them when I am doubting. Um, and I just love that. And so I would love for that to, I would love for you to have that as well. So subscribe here on YouTube if you haven't already. Hop over to equippinggodlywomen.com. Subscribe there. That's really the main place that we hang out. And I will talk to you again real soon. All right. Bye.